What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 16 of the podcast. Please and thank you. It's the all-inclusive podcast where we include all the words and all the topics that you care about. So it's episode 16. That means it's my sweet 16 for this podcast. So happy birthday to this podcast for being 16 weeks old. It's 16 weeks old, actually, not 16 uh, years old. We're going to talk about the Rugrats. We're going to talk about the Rugrats 2021 revival from the Nickelodeons, from the Paramount Pictures, the Rugrats reboot, like that kind of stuff. Because I'm a 90s kid, and that's what 90s kids talk about. They talk about stuff that happened in the 90s, because I was one of those kids that was conceived in the 90s. I was not conceived by a man and another man, or two women. I was conceived by a man and a woman, and as far as I know, they were both straight, at least at the time. So, there you go. That's how I became a human being. That is how I have been formed. I, I, I like came out of the same place that you came out of. Came out of not the same woman, but the same kind of spot. You know, so the, you, you guys know what spot I'm talking about. And all my siblings also came out of that same spot. And I, the thing is, I have the kind of siblings that you know. I love my siblings. They're great. They're all awesome. You know, I'd give them like an A or a B plus in terms of their sibling rating. But I have the kind of siblings. That, you know, I don't want to have a sexual relationship with. That's kind of weird. I don't want to have that. If anybody, if any of my siblings that are watching this are thinking about that, I don't want to take part of that. But you know what? Who you know who does want a relationship with their siblings? The Louisianas, the Texas people, the South, people in the South, the, the Kansas City, the Alabamas of the world, the West Virginias of the world. And I respect that. I respect that that's the kind of relationship that they want to have. With their siblings. It's a little bit weird for me, a little bit weird for me, but that's how they are. That's how they grew up. You know, they have those kind of families where like the mom is into the dad and that's fine. That's socially acceptable. You know, that's totally normal. But then the dad is into the daughter and some people are like, well, you know what? Trump was into Ivanka. So that's kind of socially acceptable too. And I'm like, okay, I'll let that one slide. But then the daughter will be into the brother. And I'm like, yo, that, that, that's when we get into weird territory. And then the brother will be into the mom. And they got this whole four-way thing going on. And it's kind of weird. But then they try to find other families that are also similar to them. And they try to kind of merge, you know, into one unit. And try to, try to keep that blood pure. You know, they want to keep that blood pure. And I don't judge people that do that kind of stuff. I only judge them a little bit. But I'm generally not a judgmental person. So I don't generally judge people but you know what sometimes you're gonna eventually date someone you know date a guy or a girl that has had a sexual relationship with their brother or with their with their sister and it's gonna be weird you know what if like you know i go on a date with a girl you know have you ever noticed that actually that whenever you date a girl that like had a relationship with her brother they're usually like the chill ones they're like the laid back ones that don't really give a shit you know, when you go and, and visit their families, you visit the brother, and the brother's actually this really cool laid-back guy, you know, reads a lot of books, is really into his personal development. You know, if you guys notice, that's kind of weird. It's crazy. You would think that crazies are into the whole incest shit, but no, they're like the most laid-back people I've ever met. You know, but that's the problem. You know, that's the problem that most people, most of the world is like against that because apparently for the science the science people... You know, they've noticed that when people do the incest shit, you know, they're not, uh, they don't turn out well. They don't turn out straight or they don't turn out like in a, in a specific way. They, they come out with like, I don't know, like disabilities or some shit. I mean, I, or some shit like I have my own disabilities. I have some tinnitus, you know, like I played the drums when I was a kid, when I was in my teens, I played that for a couple of years. And then I thought, you know, you play the drums and you're just like, you know, banging on that shit and you're just thinking, yo, this is great. You're not thinking about your ears, even though after literally every session, you know, I get this massive ringing in my ears. And I think, hey, you know what? That's fine. It's just part of being a drummer. <laughs> and but no, it's actually really bad for your ears until I eventually got tinnitus. And now it's permanent. You can't remove that kind of shit. So I just live with that. So that's sort of my disability. But that came after I was born. Some of these people, the incest people, they have these disabilities or or, or mental disorders or something. I, I don't really know. I'm not a science guy. I don't really know how this shit works. But something happens that is not right. Apparently, there's a wrong way to get born. And there's a right way to get born. And apparently, if you do the incest shit, you, you get born potentially in the wrong way. You know, if I go out with a girl, 
and I'm on a date, you know, and I'm about to put my schlong in her in in her area. You know, if I'm about to put my pineapple in 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 that hole. Okay, if I'm about to go into another dimension, if I'm about to put it in uncharted territory, in the territory that it has never been yet. You know, something that every girl needs to understand is that every man before he have sex for the first time, every man and you know, you can ask your man to confirm this. Every man has a little bit of fear. They have a little bit of fear because they don't know where they're going to put it. They don't know what's on the other side. That shit's like a portal, man. It's like going into another dimension. Like it feels good. Don't make me don't get me wrong. It it feels great. But sometimes you don't know if there's something waiting for you in there. You know, what if you put it in and something like bites back or some shit? Have you guys seen that movie? Of that girl with the, with the with the teeth in her vagina. Have you guys seen that shit? You know, there's a movie. There's like it's like a horror movie. Apparently, I don't know if it's good or bad. I just know it exists. So, have you guys seen that shit? There's apparently that kind of stuff going on. So, what if a girl actually has that? She has like teeth, or she has like some like clapping shit that just like snaps on your dick or something. It's a fear that we all have. It goes down with age, you know, as we get older. But in general, it's a fear that every guy has. So. If I'm about to sleep with a girl, and she tells me, just so you know, before you put it in, you need to know that I did sleep with my brother. I would be pretty upset, because that tells me that she's she's lost her V-card already. I can't introduce her to my parents. Do you know what Middle Eastern parents are like? They want someone that is pure, someone that is untouched. Which brings me to my next topic, babies. That's right, we're going to talk about The Rugrats. So Rugrats is a TV show that just is about to come out. You know, it was a 90s TV show. It was pretty popular back in the day with the cartoons, you know, on the Cartoon Networks. Well, actually not Cartoon Network. It was popular with the Nickelodeons. And they're doing a revival. And they've been talking about a revival for quite some time. They were initially talking about making a movie revival. And, you know, everyone got excited for that one. Even though we've already gotten a few movies. Okay, we've already gotten Rugrats movies. We don't need more Rugrats movies. But they were talking about doing a revival for the Rugrats movies. But then they were like, you know what? Let's do a TV show revival. And that's been in the works for quite some time. I think it's been in the works since like 2016 or something like that. But now they're bringing some of the original creators back, which is pretty cool. They're bringing back some of the original voice cast too. They they got the Angelicas and, and the Tommies and whatnot. They got, they're bringing the whole gang back. And they released the first clip of that stuff. And it does look cool. It does look cool. It's all CGI now. You know, the whole thing is CGI. It's not hand-drawn. It's not animated like it used to be. Now, there's a lot of people that were saying, you know what, like, you know, they're doing all these reboots. You know, we were having the reboot conversation again. You know, we've had the reboot conversation so many times. What's the reboot conversation? You ask the reboot conversation is why are they giving us more reboots instead of new IPs, more, more creative ideas? And it is tough. It is tough on the, on the companies, on the corporations, because it's like the reboot is like the sure thing. You know, there's already an established audience. There's already demand. You know, they already know that it could be successful. Um, at least, hey, we made it successful at one point. Maybe we can make it successful again. So there is that, like, demand. There's the supply and the demand. Have you taken Economics 101? I've taken Economics 101. I didn't get a good grade on it. I think I got a B minus. Actually, hey, that wasn't that bad. It's like some people were saying that the Rugrats series is not very relevant. Like, what's the point of doing a revival when it's like, you know, we already had Rugrats before and it was great. How about we move on to something else? The thing is, though, when it got announced, there was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of people who were like, that are like my age. Some people are in their mid 20s, late 20s, early 30s. And some of those people have kids now so those people that have kids want to watch it with their kids and be like hey when i was a 90s kid you know i used to watch this shit so now they're gonna watch it with their kids and it's gonna be like this you know they're they're gonna go through this nostalgic experience where the the parents are gonna go through this nostalgic experience and the kids are gonna be like what's rugrats i don't know anything and all this shit that's my impression of what a child would sound like 
But yeah, so that's the kind of the criticism that it was getting. It's like, okay, we're getting a lot of these reboots and whatever. Are we just going to keep, keep getting more of these reboots? Here's the thing. These massive companies, these corporations, they look at the trends and they see that, hey, people are actually very accepting of reboots. People are down for the reboots. They get them excited, even though there's the criticism that you see online that are like, oh my God, another reboot. But in the when the when you go to the money department, okay, when you talk about when you talk to the people that make the money, when they track the dollars, they get a lot of money. So there's no reason for them to stop this reboot train, this reboot massacre, or whatever you want to call it. So Paramount Plus. Uh, the the show is going to be on Paramount Plus, and you can get Paramount Plus for six dollars with commercials. I don't know what the hell that is, or Paramount Plus for nine dollars and ninety nine cents without commercials. Okay, so it is very bizarre that you can pay for a service but still get advertisements. Like they basically make more money from the six dollars than they do from the nine dollars and ninety nine cents because in the six dollars they also get money from ads. So I understand that they expect a lot of people to, or they expect the poor people to get the $6 one. They expect the rich people or the middle class people or the poor people that are in a lot of debt that are, that are acting like they're high or middle class. You know, there's that range of people as well. So they're going to go with the $9.99, which is what the one, the one that I would probably recommend. Because who does... Who wants to watch commercials? I haven't watched a commercial in quite a long time. Okay, I got that YouTube premium, so I don't need to watch commercials. The commercials that I watch are like billboards and like posters on like a bus stop sign, a bus a bus stop area. And when I'm walking around the mall, I'll see a commercial there. So Paramount Plus is going to have the CBS, MTV, Nickelodeon, Comedy Central, and BET. So everything that if you liked, I never watched any of these as a kid, except Nickelodeon and a little bit of MTV. We did not have Comedy Central or BET. Uh, we did have the CBS though. I don't know what the hell, what the hell does CBS have? I don't know what CBS has. But apparently if you like what those channels get to offer, you will like Paramount Plus. But to be honest though, I don't really want another streaming service. I don't care that you guys got the Rugrats. That's cool that you guys got the Rugrats. I appreciate that. You also got the Dora the Explorer reboot and a few other reboots, which is great. Good for you. You're going to make money with that. But I don't really want another streaming service. Right now, I got the Netflix and I was so, so, so hesitant. But eventually, I got the Prime videos. Okay. I see. This is what happened. Okay. I didn't want to get the Prime video. I got Amazon Prime because I was ordering a lot of Amazon Prime. I was ordering my gadgets. I was ordering the cameras, the microphones, the lighting equipment for the setup. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be ordering a lot of shit. So I might as well get the Prime because I want it to be here and I want it to be here fast, baby. So I got the Prime. And they were like, by the way, since you got Prime, we're also going to give you Prime video. So it kind of just came free. And I was like, well, it's not really free since I'm paying for it. But uh, so it came with it. And I was like, okay, fine. Because it came with it, I will make an exception. And I'll check out the Prime videos. And it's not that great. There's some good shows on there, like The Marvelous Miss Maisel and a few other good ones. But honestly, in general, it's not that great. And so I'm like, okay, Netflix, we got the we got the Amazon Prime, and that's good enough for me, man. That's good enough for me. You know, there are other ways to get the other shows and the movies. So you don't really need so many of these streaming services. But anyway, with the Rugrats reboot revival thingy, Here's the problem with the reboot revival is that in, is, is if these kind of reboots continue to be successful, it kind of discourages the Hollywoods from making more new IPs. This is the thing. This is the, this is the part where I can sort of relate to from like a creator standpoint. So when I'm creating content, okay, there's a lot of ideas that I personally have for creating content. And there's a lot of ideas that I want to make. There's a lot of videos that I want to make, but I can't make them because it's very, it's not very likely that people are going to search for them. So I have to make videos about other stuff. Okay. So that's kind of where I feel like they're at. So basically it's like 
from my standpoint, there's like three circles, right? There's like my circle of the stuff that I'm into, okay? And there's their cir- the, the people's circle, which is the stuff that people are into. And there's a middle circle as well, which shows all the stuff that I'm into and people are into. So that's kind of w- how I make content and here's the thing that's probably how the studios look at it they're like okay here are the intellectual properties that we have here's all the stuff that people are actually interested in so here are the ones that we can make revivals of like you know Rugrats is one of the most popular Nickelodeon cartoons and cartoons in general in the world so hey there is that demand for that and it does suck because sometimes you have OG ideas original ideas that won't gain as much traction there won't be there's no demand for your idea because it's completely new so i feel like what they need to do is they need to like have some sort of balance between having reboots and having new cartoons new ideas because here's the thing i'm okay with reboots as long as they're good and i know that a lot of times they're not that good but sometimes they are So what do you guys think of the Rugrats reboot? Are you for it? Are you against it? Are you at least curious to know what it's gonna be? Like, I'm for sure gonna at least watch the first episode just out of curiosity. I don't know if I'm gonna watch the rest of it, but, you know, just out of curiosity, I just wanted to see what they did to my Tommies, to my Chuckies, to my Angelicas. You know, see what they're up to, see what the gang is up to. So that's all I got for episode 16 of the podcast, please, and thank you. Thank you guys for joining. I always really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day slash night. Peace out.